call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Instruction to the officials report to Senate. Have that? Have that? $3,090.57 and the total fire and EMS fees for the year so far 
$270,709.69. This director attended fire prevention night on October 10th, and everyone who attended had a great time. On display was our new ambulance, so if you wanted an opportunity to look inside and outside and go through it, it was available for everyone to look at. Uh, the new ambulance is absolutely fabulous, state of the art, and we're very proud to have it on our fleet. So now we have two very, very up-to-date ambulances, and they are being used constantly, as you can see from the prior report. Uh, the fire chief reports uh, that everything is in normal state, and he's moving ahead with our ladder trucks. We're buying equipment next year, and they're still dealing with certain bidders. I know that I'll be meeting with him this month, and we'll be going over the purchase of the quint. It is a ladder and an engine all combined, and it's going to be quite, quite wonderful when it's online. Uh, the fire, uh, that's, that's it for the fire chief, and now the Hunter Meade Police Department reported that there were nine summonses issued this month in October, and uh, there were 25 vehicle crashes in October. They made 90 arrests, and year to date, 1,236 arrests. And uh, they've been very active. As you know, they are on the street all the time. We have men constantly working for us and doing a great job keeping our town safe. And that's it, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Park and Recreation, Mike. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Park and Recreation is met with Met, met with Belmar Streets Department and Pat Moriarty to start preparing the property at the RYA for the handicapped parking area. Uh, markout has begun, has been ordered, and should be there for Friday or for Tuesday. So that project's starting to uh, move along. Uh, Park and Rec's also met with the third company, Ben Schaefer, for the third and final place on bleachers, benches, and bowls for Green Acres. Also investigating for a new playground at the girls' softball field. Uh, working with the Boy Scout building, well, Boy Scouts, for a new parking area, and it's kind of going to tie in the playground, the parking area, on the uh, next to the building on Shepherd Ave. And that's my report. Thank you, Beverly. Not going to like that. Please get back. I'll go last. I'm so used to being last. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. On engineering, uh, we are winding down and closing the Green Acres projects. Uh, at our bathrooms, the new rubber floors were bought and installed at the cost of the contractor um, because the original floors did not meet our specifications. Uh, Reed Adam is coming to a close, and um, the rest of it will rely on Steve, our engineer, to give a uh, more detailed report on what's been occurring on each project. Public events. Our annual Halloween party was a huge success with over 200 adults and children attending. We had over 120 children and some adults at, that entered the costume contest and a beautiful plaque was given to each one of our winners, first, second, and third place. I want to thank our judges, Patrolman Chuck Burns, Wendy Gardner Tomasello, Jim Tomasello, and Lisa Picaz, who had the difficult job of choosing the winners. Everyone went home with a candy apple courtesy of Gardner's funeral home. A special thank you to Gardeners for always bringing a smile to everyone's face with their huge candy apples. To all my workers and every volunteer who gave up their time to make this Halloween special, I thank you. And now we move on to our annual Christmas tree lighting and our fire truck parade, which will take place on Sunday, December 1st, beginning with the tree lighting at 6.30, and the parade will start at 7 p.m. along the pipe to end at the Harry Williams Building, where Santa and Mrs. Santa will greet everyone. Continuing information uh, will be updated on our website as usual, and uh, I can always count on Dan and his blog uh, to get some information out there. Um, other than that, um, this concludes my report. Thank you. That's fine. 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 Okay, well, I'm going to rely a lot on what was said in caucus 
because I believe Mr. Wright gave my report at Carl's. But I do have a few things to add. Uh, just to reiterate, the new season has officially begun. So have props. You're going to see these signs around town. They'll either say this week or next week. That's going to show that we are picking up. We have started picking up on the east side of town. They did it last week. They have started on the west side of town. Uh, according to Public Works, it's going very well. Uh, unfortunately, the leaves are still hanging on the trees and they're not dropping as quickly as we would like them to, but they will continue to pick up throughout town. So if you see the signs, try to coordinate your <coughs> yards with those signs. Uh, please, again, when you put up the leaves, no sticks. Don't put them in plastic bags. If you're putting them curbside, they need to just be raked into a pile, hopefully away from storm drains. Uh, we did clean up down at the lake. We cut back all the debris around the bulkhead. That was a big thing. And there were parts of the bulkhead that were missing. All the metal was missing. They have repaired that, and they did complete that today. I, uh, there were about three sections, I believe, missing, and they did um, manage to find what, the metal. They bent it. They did everything they needed to do. They fastened it. They did a great job. It looks really good. So in the spring, I'm hoping to get that bulkhead painted. The floors for the borough, we addressed those last time, but they are waiting to do the entry floors because uh, they don't want the personnel in the office because it has tended to be a little smelly. So we're going to do those overnight, hopefully, either this week or next week. Um, other than that, I'm going to report uh, one more thing. Sorry. The library. I want to bring up the fact that library is having a no-fine November. So if you have a book out or you know that your child has had a book that has a very large, substantial fine, Take it back. Take the book back now. All the fines will be forgiven. So anybody out there that's got books, this is the chance to just wipe the fine clean. And if you choose to and you have a tendency to have a delinquent book, if you become a friend of the library, you get free, no fines for an entire year. So I encourage everybody to go down and talk to them at the library. They'll be happy to take the books back and it'll clean up all their inventory of all the fines that are best due. So with that, I uh, say I report progress. Thank you very much. Well, I, I'd like to say that the men did a very good job on the floor yeah, exam. They, yeah. they did a nice job. They did, they really did well. a very good job. Yep. Good. Administration? Yes, ma'am. I just want to highlight two items from caucus. Uh, that was uh, 13155 was uh, the grant extension for the Governor's Council on Alcohol and Drug Abuse. Uh, that was a six month extension and will be. Uh, Coming the next meeting, probably do a budget insertion of those funds, so I won't give the approvals for that. But just want to let you know that. And we also have the agreement for year 35 of CDBG. I didn't see a number on that one, but uh, I think it's also one of the agenda items. Uh, we're asking for two items because of timing uh, for, for walk ons for the next meeting. We uh, put them on a previous meeting because we're waiting for the, the bond to become officially legal. Uh, the first item is uh, the leaflet that we're preparing. Uh, it was not, it was under the bid limit, it was a global item, and we're basically uh, purchasing a 2013 uh, SL, SCL 800 leaper, um, self-contained, uh, and basically the, the cost is 34 5 uh, we, we lucked out on this one, uh, I have to give Pat a shout out, he reached out and they actually, he found one that was actually available because normally you would have to do like we do with the fire trucks you put an order in and wait for it to be built so it was great that they actually had one available so that would be the first item that we're looking for a walk on for that purchase and the other item i will yield to, to mr bach will be a, a change order for the bathrooms uh, we're getting close to year end and here's where the cfo hat comes out i want to make sure that we get all reimbursements back by year end so that i can close out my books so rather than waiting for the next meeting, uh, I'm requesting that we do a walk on for, for the change order from the bathroom facility. So other than that, I'll stand on my report from office. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bach? If you submitted our written report, I'm just going to highlight a few items. Uh, the first item is reconstruction of the rebound phase two. Everybody probably has noticed that the river has been milled. The uh, contractor is actively working, <coughs> contractor is actively working on uh, uh, doing some uh, base uh, base paving restoration. It is anticipated that the final uh, paving top course will be installed this Saturday. Uh, in terms of uh, the HA, I'm sorry, RYAA improvements, uh, we did meet with uh, Joe Siano of, uh, of the Belmar Public Works. We coordinated the, the work effort there, and obviously, uh, uh, we indicated what the progress is. We have the selection we have to do for the materials for the crash enclosures, and then also we're going to be coordinating uh, 
shared service. Uh, Belmar doesn't have the in has in-house survey staff, so we're providing <coughs> survey layout to keep this progress uh, moving forward with the short-term improvements. Uh, on the borough uh, <coughs> emergency generator, this is the generator set that is going to service the borough hall, but it's going to be located where the bus is parked right now, and actually we're going to put a gate across there. We're ready to go, uh, so with, if there's no objection, we're going to put that out for public bid. I hope they have a good time. <coughs> Getting back to just the last item, uh, the change order in question is not for the actual bathroom facilities. It's actually, you know, it's combined under the Green Acres. It's actually for the ball fields. Uh, ball fields were substantially completed many months ago, about six months ago. Uh, but there was uh, a need for additional import of fill that was suitable for the fields. Uh, we went back and forth with the contractor and negotiated the very best uh, uh, cost uh, for that import to the benefit of the borough uh, and with Mr. Wright's uh, concurrence, we'd like to walk that along this evening. The change order is for $12,825, and this is also the final closeout of the project change order, so it's all inclusive. We did receive many credits uh, for the modifications to the well pump that we installed. So, in essence, the 5.3 overall change order on the project. So, it brings it from the original amount of $241,580 to a total amount, final amount of $254,405. So we're very comfortable with that recommendation and we're going to add that on to the agenda. Uh, and with that, uh, with the uh, approval of this change, we're also the ASFC will also process the payment application. Uh, we've been holding for some time to work with the contractor to make sure we uh, can process that payment application. Uh, unless there's any questions or comments. Yes, I have a question. Did we straighten out whatever the problem is with the well down there? Because I know there was an, a, an issue with the electrical. Do you know anything about that? Because I know John Gunn stepped in kind of from the sewer end of it to try to figure out what the issue was. Because there was something that the pump was not, was it running constantly or it was not pumping the way it should have? And there was a backfill of water. So I'm not real clear. It, it, it's real simple. We have to work with public works who now are operating the sprinkler system. Okay. As the fall hits, we have to stop from wondering every day. You go to every other day, okay. every three days. So we're going to get along with the schedule uh, with okay. public works to make sure when they turn it on, when they turn it off. We'll, we always have to treat it as your lawn. Okay. So we all know in the fall, you have a sprinkler system, you have to start turning it down. And that's in the way it's turning it All right, is that what you understood? Or is there no, there was an electrical, there was an there was electrical, electrical issue. issue. If, you, if you're talking, the right now, uh, John Doug's working on the electrical for the pump station. Yes. Now, this is not for the irrigation well. No, it's for the pump, pump station. station. Okay. My understanding that is going to be completed. It's not completed already today. It will be complete tomorrow because I know okay. that they need to be out there so to put the final uh, touches on the uh, okay. soda room floor. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, we worked out all the details of that. Okay. I know you're completing that this week, right. so that should be resolved. Okay. It's not, I'll be out there tomorrow. That's uh, fine. And I'll reach out to John in the morning. Come on. I'm going to Steve. Um, you have a, a, a date to where this change order was by any chance? Of like when you guys all discussed this change order? What do you Like what year? Or is it just? Oh, no, it's this year. It was this year? It was this year. The contractor, when we did the field, the contractor came back with a, a request for a change order and 30 some odd thousand dollars. And we did bring it up at the hearing committee, but we just finally got it to uh, adjust the number to a more reasonable number for what the actual cost was. So they did have numerous quantities in their, their bid package. For that amount of volume that they brought in, it wouldn't be appropriate to spend that number. Did that answer your question, am I right, Mike? Yes. Anybody else have any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Bob. Thank you. Ron, do you have any? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have everything. Okay. Um, we're going to go back to Ram. Are you the uh, report? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> thank I you, have, I have the report of the construction official for the month of October. So $12,145 collected in various fees and permits, all money's worth turned over to the treasurer. By the report of the police chief for the month of October, the total of $100.25 was collected for accident discovery of and solicitor reports over request. 
and uh, there were no firearm returns. All those these returns over to the Treasurer. Get the report to our clerk for the month of October, a total of $364.47 was collected for various uh, permits and dog licenses, and monies were turned over to the Treasurer. Get the report of the Registrar of Statistics for the month of October, a total of $2,740 was collected for death count copies, marriage copies, and marriage licenses. All monies were turned over to the Treasurer. We have the report of the uh, tax collector for the month of October. A total of $3,541,329.39 was collected in taxes, and in sewer, a total of $42,141.62. I have the report of the municipal court for the month of uh, September. A total of $12,437.35 was collected in fines. All monies were turned over to the treasurer. And I have the report of the uh, deputy fire chief, fire marshal, for the month of October. Uh, there were a total of $3,165 in fees collected. There were 84 inspections completed, 128 total incidents, three type one permits issued, and uh, emergency medical fees collected for the month of October, $23,090.57. And all of these monies were turned to the uh, treasurer. And that's it. And I have a motion in the report. <coughs> My second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I have it. Madam Mayor, if I could just add one more item to report. Certainly. I'm just kind enough to uh, remind me. Uh, at the next caucus meeting, we're going to be asked for action for the uh, job closure, our final change order for the actual bathroom facility. Uh, if you recall, this is the additional security alarm system, cameras, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the funding has been put in place by our CFO. We'll be able to act on that. Do you know it's that caucus for? Kind of telegraphing right. now, so you'll see that paperwork coming as part of your package. I don't know what it is. Exactly. Everybody get that? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. <coughs> Old business. Public comments on the agenda items. Does anyone wishing to speak, please come up to the microphone to your name and address and the things that we just went over. Seeing no one wishes to step up uh, with any comments, um, I make a motion that we uh, close this uh, portion of public comments. All those in favor? Services agreement with the county of Canyon for I so move. I second. Roll 
people. Mrs. Passman. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Ruth. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Barbara, that's why I was one. This resolution is adopted. Uh, resolution 13153 is a resolution authorizing the check be issued for Block 88, Block 7 as a refund for overpayment of taxes. I have a motion. I so move. How about a second? I'll second. Roll oh, call. Mrs. Keller. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. Otherwise, why not? I move this resolution is now adopted. Uh, resolution 13154 is a resolution authorizing a temporary use permit for Anthony's Woods. I so move. I so true. Make a motion. I'll second. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Ruth. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. I move this resolution is now adopted. Resolution 13155 is a resolution authorizing the submission of an extension of the Fiscal Grant Governor's Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse to uh, January 1st, 2014. Can I have a motion? I so move. Second. I second it. Roll call. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. Five lines, one else. I mean, 
I move that this resolution is now adopted. Now the resolution 13158 is a resolution authorizing the purchase of a leaving machine in the amount of 34500 Second it. 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 Some three foot fences, four foot fences um, that don't have 
it's not, there's not even some fences on some fields uh, where you can't even lock people out. So the uh, softball uh, has been, well, you got to understand that now this is all new because now uh, running is getting into being involved with softball and baseball. So for the last at least 15 years that I can remember, that I've been present in, in Runnymede uh, Athletics. They've been ran by the softball field, uh, the softball association has been running the softball field. RYA has been running the, uh, the baseball fields. So they chose to whether have higher fences and lock on them and, and as an ROI and you know, didn't choose to lock their fences. So and I guess as the council, we have to find out what's legal, what's well, that's the liability of having children on these on these fields unsupervised. I think that's that's the big question. The liability is there. Well, would it be any different than children Same playing at the golf park? Basketball. Would it be any different than children playing at Green Acres? I mean, it's common ground. It's owned by the borough of Runnymede. How come it's caged up, where the kids would have to ride their bikes all the way to the other side of town and possibly get run over to go play at those fields? When they're 200 feet up the street from my home. Well, you're lucky you have them. You live on my side, you don't have anything. Well, that, that, that's I, I don't mean it to be smart. Right, but I'm saying that's smart. Smart. But as a matter of fact, they are at the end of my street. And I don't understand why we're caging up beautiful fields that the kids on the street could be blamed. All right, well, I'll go out, and I'm not in parts and rights, but I'll say this. So if that's the solution, if there's... If that's the issue, then we need to find a solution. And if the solution is that we reach out to the softball field, people that manage it, and ask them, especially the field that's in the back, mm -hmm. because I know that they don't regularly use that field that sits in the back. It's more towards the woods. So I, I'm saying let's try to find a solution. We'll try to reach out to them and see if they're opposed to opening up the access to that field in the back. Well, the field that's up front, right by the basketball right. courts, that field's in dire straits. No one's using it. The infield is overgrown with grass. It's just lying to waste. And I don't understand why it's locked up. But I mean, if you could reach out, that's fine. I I haven't seen it used in quite some time. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. more of to see what um, if, if it was any if it was anything like the RYAA there's there's a uh, there's a lease and an agreement so I think we'd have to check on what the lease and agreement is <coughs> with the softball field if there even is one um, and more so if it's even legal that to you know keep children off our public parks I mean they are public parks no matter how you slice it they are so we'll, I'll, I'll look into, you know, see about legally and... If the decision really for council and the, and the organization to make, if you wanted to restrict the park as owners of it, you, know, you have the ability to do that if you would like. But, you know, the addressing this president's concern, I mean, the decision has to be made as to you know, what the prudent use of the field would be uh, in councils and the organizations. Because even though the softball, it's no different than our white or the softball, I mean, overall they are in town. So they are, I mean, how do you do them as they are accessible to everybody? Yeah, if you can tax that money to the building maintain. Exactly. The rest of the exactly. Aside from the fact that they're they're locked, has anyone ever approached them fields. and been no, rejected? No. I mean, because not we're not, I can't answer what uh, obviously if it's locked, it has to be offensive and it's prohibitory. I I I have I have personally no, spoke to one of the coaches they lock them every day. when me and my son were down there playing, and he yelled at me and threatened to call the cops on me if I didn't get off this field, like he owned it. So I was kind of saying, it's a different conversation for that point of view than We're going to have to look into this matter. We can't discuss it. I appreciate it. That's all I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes. Alan. 
Carol Palisano, E31 North Oakland Avenue. I was wondering, what time does the Leaf Collection start? Uh, that, uh, well, they report to work at 7 o'clock, so I'm going to say... 7 30. In that vicinity, I'll say that for sure. I'm going to get there in 15 minutes, so I'm going to say in that vicinity. Once they get there, they get everything hooked up, ready to go. I was wondering, uh, Bingham School, could they make that like the first stop, like at 7.30 in the morning, on the, first, not the Monday that they're doing the West Side? Because it gets to be a mess. Residents there are trying to put their leaves out, killing parking spots, and you know what a mess that Either that or maybe 10 o'clock. Okay, down into, let's do the east side, and your folks has a problem yeah. as well. Absolutely, I'll make, I will talk to um, Nick tomorrow, and I will make sure that he understands that he's going to try to keep those areas of work off. I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll comply. If I may, Arthur, we, we also try to keep the equipment out of those areas during the time that we get to go to school. school. So they can do it at the end of the day, hopefully for the next, <laughs> try to get it for the last thing of the day for the following. Like, just so it's done on the Mondays, so it doesn't last all week and yeah. mess up. Yeah, unfortunately, that's when everybody breaks is Saturday and Sunday, so it's tough for them. But I, I will do what I can to try to get them to understand that it is important because it does limit the parking. Thank you so much. Okay, no Um, okay, I had spoke with Miss, I don't know if you remember, Miss, Miss Pazio on the phone the other day, you remember? Okay, we talked about a couple things, but I wasn't sure if I had asked about this, so I thought I would bring up here. Um, Oakland Ave is pitch black at night. Did we talk about the light? Okay, I didn't think so. How do I go about, like, do I start a petition or something? We need some kind of lighting on that street. I mean, we've had a lot of cars being side slaved. I mean, a lot of that has to do with speeding, but it's extremely late, extremely dark. We do have one light, I believe, but it's always so dim, you can't even tell that it's on. I'm on North Oakland, so I'm between um, Third Avenue yeah. and... Um, first? I guess I'd be considered first. Forty no. Smith? No, she's in between the fields and third. Uh, at the top of the hill. Okay, okay. Oh, I am, I was saying what she was saying. All right, I know where you are, okay. I'm just trying to get hold so I can, I'll go out and look. Well, I'll tell you, if you make, if you're coming, say, from the RIA, and you make a right onto Third Ave, okay. and then make a right onto o North Oakland, it's right in that block. Okay. All right, I'll check it out. Okay. But it wasn't about that. We talked about some other oh, things. Yeah. I mean, it's a process, unfortunately, and somehow or another, I become this person, this the person. So I'm not sure how that happened, but that's okay. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll check it out. We'll look at it. We do have to present it to PSC. We have to get a number on the poll. Okay. So it, there's nothing that we should be doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. signing we'll something. Look in your vicinity and see what the lady looks like. Where the best. And PSC does make the decision. They'll come out. Okay. Sometimes they deem that it's necessary, and sometimes they say, no, it's not. So Not necessary to be able to see when you I, Yeah, I know. It's, okay. it's a catch-22, but we'll okay. definitely listen. We do follow through with it, and okay. I will approach it, and I'll find out what the numbers are in that area, and they can come out and check it. Okay, thank you. South Oakland Avenue. Um, as the RY president, we do not have the ability to lock our fields like they do, and it's very true. Loitering shouldn't be allowed, but fighting should. So our fields, we suffer a lot of wear and tear from the, you know, not that it's a problem, um, but softball does have very limited access, and I will add that they only have one team this year. So there's no way that, you know, I've actually, they've reached out to me for help and have indicated that there's only one team there. One team. Software, I mean, that's one softball team right now. Um, 
on a second note in talking about green acres, when are those fields going to be available for? The first day of spring, 2014. Is that correct? Yes. Can you move it off a couple of weeks, spring, or the use of fields? Yeah, if you have the power. Well, uh, the state soccer season and home travel. What, what are you speaking to us? Starts the first week of March. So if we can't use them until the first day of spring, then that puts us in Gloucester Township again this year. Yeah, well, it's, see, it's not. It, what, had it been approached to us that they needed four growing seasons? This, this, well, we needed the technically three growing seasons. Okay. So, and we're coming off right now for a month. third growing season. Right, so the third growing season will actually be March. Will be uh, early spring. So it's gonna be overseeded now uh, in fall. And then it's also gonna be topped off and overseeded right when the snow breaks. And then you get that first hit of new growth and you should be fine at that point. I can tell you right now, say the bleach, it's, it's not an ROI decision if you go on SJSL.org. Um, unfortunately, the state of New Jersey starts their spring soccer season the first weekend in March. I could not play if they never play. Yeah, yeah, so you know. No, no, it starts in March. It, yeah. it, there's no, and, and if you can't commit to having a, we use CDA at spring for our spring fields because we don't have fields in our fields. So it. Well, Maria, I, I will tell you that's something that I'll bring up with the committee. Okay. And we'll see what I mean, two what weeks makes a huge. So when, when did it start? What's the date? Um, it's the first weekend in March. I don't have the okay. Okay. It's literally the first weekend in March that it starts. Okay, so here's my question. If we did that, how much work is going to change the reliability and maintenance? We're, we're almost there with the fields, mm -hmm. and we do have good growth, base growth there. Yeah. We're going to have the fall overseed, yeah, so as soon as the weather starts breaking up, just like when you start seeing the pools and everything else, that's when we get the new growth of the, the grass. That is the grass that is going to infill between all the sort of structural grass we have coming out. So if we go ahead and have play on there. Two weeks is going to make yes, it grow, I, But it'll ruin it, yeah. If, if you think about what's growing in March, really, that's the beginning of it. But, you know. I don't want to bleach. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I think it's good to take a look at with the committee. We'll take a look on how the fields are. Because we, we also have the field and the all-purpose field. No, we use we actually. <coughs> Unfortunately, our home field. Well, right, well, I'll bring it up. Well, could you just play one or two games at CBAA and then come here for later? No, can you, can you actually, you can't, unfortunately. You commit this to um, fields for the season. And uh, that's how they set up the wraps. You get single charge wrap fees if you only have one game at one location. So right. like when they do the season for, you know, the schedule for the whole season. But we can see his point. We can't ruin because that's one runner. I, I, I think I might have misspoke. We're, I don't have my, that part of the file with me. Was the fourth row of the season going to be this spring? No. 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 It's going to be, it's going to be fall. We wanted to move them down in fall and that was fourth. Okay, this, this fall just passed. Yeah. Okay, I just want to double check it. Yeah. Could you ask for the first two or three games on the road? I could try with that. But I would be willing, because I've been told so many different times, I would actually need something. You know, I'd need commitment. Because otherwise, you pay the hundred dollars per week. You know, change if you change locations. All right. So I mean, just a not. Yeah. 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 It's just very wet and a and a, a state rap so can, yeah, and a state rap will easily walk on those fields and even them not liable because yeah. not for any other reason. Is it wet right now because they're not programmed correctly? I will follow that. I'll follow them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate all the hard work all of you do. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. Yeah. Anyone else wishing to speak? Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? All those in favor? Aye. Can I have an adjournment? Aye. 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 Aye
two weeks. I make a motion for um, this meeting to be adjourned. Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.